Hi, I'm British Tanko Reyes and welcome to a special edition on family history genealogy. It may just be of great interest to members of my own family, but if you're not in my family and you've ever hit a brick wall in your genealogy search, you might learn a way to solve your own family history mystery. If you don't know me yet, my name is Bertus Arnold Schenkel Reyes. I'm a volunteer manager at a senior center in New York City. And as a volunteer, I teach family history genealogy to seniors around New York at other senior centers, community centers, churches, frankly, anywhere that'll have me. Genealogy is my passion and I've been at it for 30 something years. My mom got me started on it when I was still in high school. This story concerns my paternal grandmother, Ida Dora Arnold's line. Here she is. She was the only grandparent alive when I was born in 1964. So this story involves all of her descendants as well as those of her brother, Bertus Abner Arnold Jr. and half-sister Margaret. Here's Bert and his wife, Ethel, but that line has no living descendants as uh, both Lois and Jane Arnold did not marry. Uh, they also had an adopted sibling, Roy Spencer Arnold, uh, who had a, only a stepdaughter. Ida married Claude Andrew Schenkel in 1924. She had Bertus Andrew Schenkel at the end of that year. Claude Arnold Schenkel came in 1927, and then they had their daughter, uh, Mary Evelyn Schenkel, in 1932. They remained happily married until his death in 1962. To start, what I know about this side of the family was from a letter written by my great uncle, Ida's brother, Bertus Abner Arnold Jr. to his daughters, Lois and Jane Arnold. In this letter, Bertus Abner Arnold Jr. writes, your grandmother, Mary Frances Hoffman Arnold, was born in Charleston, West Virginia, April 10th, 19, excuse me, 1865, and came to Cleveland, Ohio when she was five years old, and she lived there until I stole her away on June 13th, 1887. Um, that information is incomplete, though, because she did marry first to James Higgins and had a daughter, Margaret Higgins, who was adopted later by Bertus Arnold Sr. Uh, I could not find a marriage between Peter Hoffman and Sarah Jane Barry. It was not until 2011, I guess, when Ancestry.com released the West Virginia Marriage Index, 1785 to 1974, that I found an 1865 marriage between Peter Hoffman and Jane Painter, and subsequently found an 1859 marriage between a Jane Barry and a Charles Painter, both in what was now West Virginia. So Jane Barry had been married before marrying Peter Hoffman. Hoffman. With this information, I found Charles Painter and his new bride Jane, and she was 17, not 15, in the 1860 census of Latart Township, Meigs County, Ohio. That's just across the border in Ohio from West Virginia. West Virginia became a state in only 1863. It actually seceded from the Confederacy to become a state during the Civil War which begins, as you know, um, in 1861 and ends in March of, uh, excuse me, April 9th, 1865. So like I said, Jane Painter must have been divorced or widowed before she married Peter Hoffman in 1865. Sure enough, there's a, a Charles, uh, Sergeant Charles G. Painter who dies at Andersonville Prison in Georgia as a prisoner of war on July 15, 1864. He is listed as being in the Virginia Cavalry, but he's in a, in a Confederate prison, so I can safely presume he was actually our Char Charles Painter from West Virginia. He died of anasarca, which is basically extreme edema or swelling caused by injury or dehydration or malnutrition. Conditions at Andersonville were atrocious. He really went through a living hell there, I'm sure. As you can see in this domain, public domain image, it was not a prison per se, but a fortified encampment. Tents instead of barracks, a river running through it for fresh water on one end, bathing in the middle, and an outdoor toilet on the other end. Uh, now the question is, when was Mary Frances Hoffman born? Remember, Bertus Arnold Jr. says his mother was born April 10th, 1865. Let's go backwards in time and see what we can find out. The obituary for Mary Frances Arnold comes uh, from the St. Petersburg Times on Wednesday, January 8th, 1845. It reads, 
Mrs. Mary Frances Arnold, 79, resident here for the past 29 years and wife of the late B.A. Arnold, died yesterday morning at their home, 1331 54th Street North. Mrs. Arnold came here from Buffalo, New York. She is survived by two daughters, Mrs. Claude Shankle and Mrs. Margaret Roberts, both of this city. Two sons, Bert Arnold, Tampa, and Roy S. Arnold, chief boatswain's mate in the U.S. Navy, and six grandchildren, Lois Arnold, Jane Arnold, PFC, Bert Schenkel, Claude Schenkel, Mary Schenkel, and Mary Roberts. It's only the 8th of January in the obit, so chances are she hasn't had her birthday yet. Even if we don't know her birthday is April 10th, she would have had her 80th birthday later in the year, suggesting she was born in 1865. Uh, by the way, her husband had died about eight weeks before, after about 57 years of marriage. Um, here's her uh, death certificate, which confirms that the informant listed her date of birth as April 10th, 1865. To put her passing in context um, with time, by the way, her obituary implies that her adopted son Roy and her two grandsons, Bert and Claude Schenkel, are fighting on World War II, which won't end for a few a few months. Going back in time to look at Mary's birthday, we see as early as the eight, excuse me 1900 census, she's listed her birthday as April of 1865. But if you go back to the 1880 census. Uh, Mary is listed as 16 years old, and in the 1870 census, she's listed as 6 years old. Only the 1900 census asked birth month and year. Both the 1870 and 1880 censuses ask age and use as their recording date June 1st. So she would have had to have been born in 1864 to be 6 years old in 1870 or 16 years old in 1880. So we're kind of uh, looking at a possible birth date of 1864. If not, there's some hanky-panky going on because her first husband doesn't die um, until 1864. Jane Berry's um, first husband, Charles Painter, uh, died at Andersonville Prison July 15, 1864. That's three months after his possible daughter's birth, but suggests he probably never saw her if he was her daughter anyway. If you paid close attention to the 1870 and 1880 census records, uh, you would have you know, seen them as they whiz by there, that Charles, I mean, excuse me, Spencer Painter um, is even older than Mary Frances Hoffman. Um, Spencer Hoffman, he's called. He would have also have had to have been a, a child, though, of Charles G. Painter. So where did Spencer go? This is the 1910 census of Ohio, Cuyahoga County, Euclid Township. Look who's listed right above Peter Hoffman and Jane Berry. Listed here, by the way, is Elizabeth J. So we know her name was Elizabeth Jane. Um, it's a painter, Charles Painter, who was born in 1862, the same year as Spencer Painter or Hoffman. His wife is listed as Ada Painter, who's had 12 kids, nine of whom are living. We do find a marriage license for Spencer Painter to Ada French on September 20th, 1882. So Charles Painter and Jane Berry had a boy, Charles Spencer Painter, who's listed as Spencer Hoffman in the first two census records in which he's enumerated. I think it all makes a strong case for Mary Frances Hoffman possibly being born as a painter. Uh, a little bit about her life. Uh, she, like her mother, was married twice. Mary widowed young um, when her first husband, James Higgins, died about 1886. They had one daughter, Margaret Bell Higgins. Uh, she was adopted by her stepfather, father, Bertus Abner Arnold Sr. Margaret had one daughter, Margaret Borlas Roberts, from her English husband, Richard Roberts. Uh, to us, she was always called Marky. Her father is listed in the 1930 census as a grape juice salesman. They were living in Westfield, Chautauqua County, New York. You can still go there and tour the Grape Discovery Center, a kind of grape museum started by Welch's. There are more than 20 wineries in the area, and at least back then there were several huge Welch's grape factories. Uh, Lois Arnold writes about her grandfather. Bertus Abner Arnold Sr. worked as a carpenter in his early years, in the late 1800s and early 1900s. He and his wife worked in Volunteers of America, an offshoot of the Sa Salvation Army. Part of their work was running rescue missions, probably in Syracuse and Buffalo. Their children, Margaret, Bertus Jr., and Ida, often stood on street corners singing or playing instruments to attract the homeless or addicted to attend services in the mission. 
There, Burtis Sr. preached and Mary ran a soup kitchen. For many years, he was known as Major Arnold, probably a reflection of his rank in the Volunteers. After retiring from the Volunteers, Burtis Sr. became a contractor, building homes and cottages in Chautauqua and Erie counties in New York. In 1916, he and his wife and family became winter residents of St. Petersburg. He began contracting to build, home, build homes there. Over the years, they still went to Maple Springs on Chautauqua Lake for the summer, where he continued to build. Lois Arnold continues, as a member of the Mirror Lake Christian Church in St. Petersburg, he was always proud to point out that the doors to the church entryway, which he had designed and built. It appears that the front doors have since been replaced with glass doors. Mary Frances Hoffman and Bertus Abner Arnold's great-grandson, uh, excuse me, great-great-grandson Danny Delaney was married in this very building. Earlier, uh, little Danny was attending uh, elementary school in Largo, Florida. And once when the subject of local history came up in the class, Danny told his teacher, Mildred Donegan Cole, that his family had long been residents of the area. She asked the family names, which much to her surprise he knew, as did she. The name Schenkel was instantly recalled as the teacher's mother, Mrs. Cecil Donegan, was best friends with Ida Arnold Schenkel. The teacher arranged for Danny's mom and uncle, that's me, uh, to get to know more of their past. Meeting with Mrs. Donegan shortly before her death at the age of 99, uh, my sister and I uh, and little Danny were able to hear stories about the Arnold's early years. One story involved her own home for many years, which Burtis Arnold Sr. had built. She relayed that his services were highly requested during the Great Depression because of his ability to build homes with such accuracy to plan that not so much as a plank or two were left after the home's completion. When she sold her large historic home and moved to a more manageable space right across the street, she was horrified to see the new owners replacing the roof. They instructed her that they were able to see sunlight through the roof. Mrs. Donegan asked them if they had seen any leaks, which they had not. Of course not, she said. That's the way he built the roof. If it's dry, the roof leaks out hot air in the attic, and if it's wet, the wood expands and doesn't leak rainwater inside. We all have air conditioners now, and that construction tip is lost to the ages. Uh, Mrs. Donegan was also able to impart some knowledge of Mrs. Arnold. She said that guests in the Arnold home were apparently always expected to use their best manners. This held especially true at the dinner table, where the good china was always used when guests were over. An article by Lois Arnold appearing in the St. Petersburg Times recounting a subsequent visit she had with Cecil Donegan, Cecil that she had met the woman to become her best friend, Ida Dora Arnold, at Mirror Lake Christian Church. Uh, so by the way, when Danny married Kelly at the former Mirror Lake Christian Church building in St. Petersburg, it was being used as, as an event space, but I'm told that it's now functioning as a church again. That's all I know for now about Mary Frances Hoffman Higgins Arnold. Um, and this would all be conjecture, but now with genetic genealogy, we should be able to know with certainty who our ancestors are by connecting family trees with people who share bits of our DNA. So I did my autosomal DNA test through Ancestry.com and found that Charles G. Painter's great-grandfather, John Peter Painter Sr., had two descendants who I share DNA with. Uh, each through a different sibling of John Peter Painter Jr., who is my fourth great-grandfather. <clears throat> it would be nice to find some matching descendants of Charles Spencer Painter, Mary Frances Hoffman Higgins Arnold's brother. Um, he did have nine surviving children, according to the 19th census, but we would share DNA with his mother anyway, so we, it wouldn't be conclusive. You have to match with an ancestor of the person whose DNA we're hoping to prove. So... Unfortunately, I had also, um, for a very long time, had the um, father of Mary Frances Hoffman Higgins Arnold as Peter Hoffman, and they did provide me with one shared DNA match with a sister of, of, um, of him. So, um, the question arises, you know, do we let a sleeping dog lie? Um, did Mary Frances Hoffman Higgins Arnold know who her birth father was? Would she want to know? That's something else um, that we may never know. Uh, but what we do know is that Elizabeth Jane Berry Painter Hoffman married a man who was willing to be her children's dad. 
Uh, this is the only picture I've found of Peter and Jane Hoffman. I'm told Peter lost an arm in the Civil War fighting for the Union. The couple had at least seven more children together, at least four of which had children. One son, Peter Jr., married an Arnold cousin of Bertus Abner Arnold Sr., so DNA matches with those descendants is mixed with Arnold DNA, so you really can't support any genetic connection yet. Um, case closed? Absolutely not. Um, I also have that DNA connection with Peter. Peter Hoffman. Uh, Peter's parents, Nicholas and Susanna Reinhardt, um, sometimes called Renault, depending on whether they were French or German for the day, um, Renault liked the car, were from Alsace-Lorraine, and depending upon the census, they said they were either from France or Germany. Um, Cecil Donegan even said that French was spoken in the home. So it all boils down to which of the genetic links will hold true. Um, so it's still up in the air and we don't know. All we know is that we have a, an ancestor who loved his daughter enough to uh, make sure that she always felt like she was his. And so I will refer to her as Mary Frances Hoffman Higgins Arnold still, um, but I have put her parentage down um, and I'm tracing the painter DNA uh, line as well. Um, the reason we're not connecting with any brothers or sisters um, of, of Charles uh, G. Painter is because there were no um, children that had um, surviving descendants or, or they haven't taken tests and I haven't been able to connect them. Even his grandfather's kids, um, there was only one line that uh, married and had children. Three daughters seem to have um, either not married or married late in life and never had children of their own. So the DNA question is still up in the air too. And Mary Frances Hoffman is a loving, amazing part of our history that I never got to know, but I feel closer to now that I've done this DNA search. I hope you enjoyed this. I wish I had answers to everything, but um, there's more to be had, and I'll put um, any new findings in the comments on the, underneath this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you much.